Toad, Master of the Maze, and the original My Little Pony. Today, she joins us as the voices of, and make some noise if I mention something you like, Lotus Blossom. Woo, all right. <laughs> Jersey Red. Woo. Woo. Intrepid reporter, April O'Neill. <laughs> Undervalued Attack of the Killer Tomatoes animated series. Yeah. 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 Got a little bit taste in there. Today, he joins us to discuss the roles of Rocksteady. question often then becomes, did you guys have any idea, dot, dot, dot. No one ever does. It, this, writ large, like all over the world, 
is impossible to predict. Um, when you're taking a whole pile of someone else's money and doing something, and then you go to another job. And you Wait, you got it. paid? <laughs> <laughs> well, paid is a strong word. I, I got some money. Okay. But not, I got paid about $100 million Canadian. <laughs> which, is about, which is about eight grand. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that, so it was a traditional audition for me, and I think probably for Barry. It was a very traditional audition. Um, I, you know, in those days, what you used to do is you used to go to your agent's office, and they had an actual recording booth, and then you'd go into the recording booth and you'd read the copy for whatever it was, and, and that was about it. And they sort of directed you. You didn't really see a director, but the agent did it. And so I, you know, the agent called me and he said, we, we want you to come in and you're gonna read for a show called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I had not heard of the comic book. So my first question is, what kind of interesting stuff have you been smoking lately? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he said, no, no, it's, that's what it is, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I said, okay, I'll come in. And the interesting thing was, we all read for all four. Every that audition read for all four, and uh, when it, you know, so you try to think of what voices you want to do for each character. You have a brief description of the character, and you try to think it up. And so I was thinking, okay, I'm a fellow, you know, science, and a little nerdy, and what kind of voice am I going to use? And, you said, and the agent... Mary's voice! And the agent, yeah, <laughs> the agent said, just use your own voice. We all did. And I said, well, you know, I thought about that for a minute. I mean, so... My voice is nerdy, that's what they were telling me. But I said, okay, I'll do that. And, um, and I did. And now, now you guys uh, had an interesting experience, you and Cam. Why, yes. You may <laughs> want to talk about it. I have teamed them up. Yeah, so, yeah, so when I auditioned, uh, and uh, like Barry said, uh, read for all four turtles. And uh, when I got called back for it, and uh, ultimately booked, when we showed up for the first session to record, uh, they hadn't decided whether I was gonna be Michelangelo or Leonardo in the same with Cam. And so they flipped a coin. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, so, so at the first session, uh, Stu said, uh, Tony, why don't you, you do Michelangelo first, Cam, you do Leonardo first, and then we'll do a full pass like that, and then we'll do a second pass, and and switch you guys. Well, guess what happened after lunch? <laughs> Nothing <laughs> happened after lunch. And I wanted to be Michelangelo so bad. <laughs> and I ended up with Leonardo. Yeah. I went, wait, up, wait, up. you said we were going to switch after lunch? <laughs> did, did no, you? don't need it. No, 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 we're good, we're good. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I ended up with Michelangelo. And, and uh, for my audition, uh, they, they were using Sean Penn as a, an example of kind of what they were looking for from Fast Times or Ridgemont High. So I just sort of did my version of that. And that's where As I did I, I up, but <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but you're the leader now, Cammie. Yeah, well, and I got in trouble early oh, on. Oh, it's a great story, yeah. Got in trouble early in the, in the uh, beginning of the recordings because these guys are all doing these, you know, goofy, larger than life characters. And I'm, you know, the straight man. Uh, uh, pardon the pun, hardy har har. Right? <laughs> and so I was trying to sneak Leo into kind of a goofy place like my brother's here. And I was trying to make him like a superhero, trying to get a look. And after one of the reads, um, one of the scariest things when you're in a recording booth is when the director clicks on the talk back button. Hey, Cam. Uh, could you come in here for a second? <laughs> it's like yeah. Cam, don't put any more money in the meter. You're good. <laughs> so she calls me out in the hallway and she goes, what are you doing? What, what, do you mean? What, what, what are you doing in there? What, well, I'm just trying to make Leo kind of, you know, kind of goofy like the other guys. And she goes, well, don't. <laughs> she said, you are the leader and these boys need to bounce all around you and you're like, the tent pole there, so, yeah. you know, that's your job. And I was so like, I'm gonna be silly, I wanna be funny. So it took me a while to get on board with just 
being uh, the leader, but once I allowed that to happen, I had a wonderful time letting these coconuts uh, run all over. Which leads me to my favorite episode of mine, is where he gets zapped with um, some, 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 and he's done being the leader, and y'all, he just goes, y'all just take care of it, and I'm gonna sit here in the lair and have pizza and watch cartoons. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Life imitates <our>. art. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, as actors, we're all a little insecure. Um, what? Yeah, you know, even, even the great Rob Paulson over there. If you read his amazing book, Voice Lessons, you will learn so much. I hope that you each get it. It's really life-changing. It was for me. But my, my most amazing recognition, light bulb, was that, oh, Rob feels that way, too. And I thought, well, if Rob can be insecure, so can I. Um, so you're insecure, and uh, the first day you walk into a job, and you hope you continue to keep the part, and um, so we go through the first rehearsal, and uh, in, in the break, uh, I get called into the booth by Stu, and he says, well, you know, I didn't want you to be April. Oh, shoot. I'm going home. Fun way to start a session. Yeah. <laughs> he says, but I played all the auditions from the 200 women in Los Angeles, and each time they said, that's not April, that's not April. I'm thinking, oh God, maybe I'm still not April. And then he says, and then I played yours, and I told them, this is not April. And they said, that's April. How about that? So, um, and now Stu's dead, so that shows me. <laughs> going to like you, who's not going to like you, and this, is, this is, has been an amazing journey with the most amazingly talented cast We ever. love our April. Yes, we do. Yes, and she's wearing leather on her jacket. <laughs> he died. Yeah. <laughs> Rob said to somebody up first that, uh, again, it's a very common question asked, uh, you know, did you know it was going to be successful when you were making a book? I always like to transfer that <coughs> to when did you begin to realize that this may have been like, exceeding expectations? Actually, uh, uh, I'll answer that yeah. from uh, my, my perspective. So, um, you know, we did our first five part mini series and it aired at Christmas time, and we didn't have a clue whether it was going to go. I don't even think I thought it was going to be a series. It was just one and done. Yeah. And um, I went into the hospital with my, in labor, had my daughter on April 7th, 1988. And that was the day, that, yeah, that was the day that my agent called me to congratulate me on having my daughter and that Ninja Turtles went to series, so the date sticks in my mind. But two years later, when she was just in the stroller, I was in the park, um, and every child had on a Ninja Turtle hat, on a Ninja Turtle t-shirt and shoes, and you name it, and I realized, my God, if this would have been us on camera, we wouldn't have been able to go out. Yeah. It was crazy, so that's when the light bulb went on. Yeah, I think for me, it was walking in a Toys R Us. Um, I walked into Toys R Us uh, one around the holidays, and it's shelves of turtle things, and I thought, what the heck is this? Yeah. I had no idea. I absolutely had no idea until then. Um, and some of the reason why our stories match here is because we're not on camera. Right. right. Now, if this had been some insane on camera, you know, flight to the moon, we wouldn't be able to, you know, go to the, the you know, the market without someone, hey, are you that guy? So we have this great an anonymity, which, um, you know, actors, rather than people coming up to you at a restaurant or whatever. But I was kind of going, I kind of want people to know. <laughs> so I was at the movies uh, one day, when, in the multiplex, and there was lines and lines. And I see this little guy, maybe eight years old, whatever, <laughs> and he's got the turtle hat on, he's got the sweater, and the, Plush Leo and everything like that. He's got this big old ice cream. And I'm like, I'm gonna give this kid a thrill. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I walk over to this kid, right? And I go, hey, I, I, I can tell you really like the Ninja Turtles, huh? 
Yeah. <laughs> well, guess what? I'm Leonardo. Oh, yeah? <laughs> and I'm Donatello. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, oh, yeah, okay. So, so before the guards at the movie theater, you know, cart me away for, yeah. for playing with little children. <laughs> what? <laughs> Um, yeah. But yeah, that's why I said, well, I'll just. Then people back came to up to Cam life. and asked if Cam was Roman Polanski. And that's what <laughs> it was very cryptic, but people my age. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Um, I think in my case, it was uh, when my parents started calling and saying, hi, honey, my mom would call, hi, honey, um, there's somebody at work whose little boy just loves Ninja Turtles. And then it happened more and more. And, and uh, I think also, when my, uh, my son, who is now 40, was yeah. born right at that time. And so I would start going to career day. And uh, I felt so badly for the other moms and dads at career day. Say, okay, this is, uh, this is Rochelle's mom, and she is an attorney, and she deals in um, you know, uh, uh, real estate litigation. <laughs> you know? And this is Larry's dad, and he is a mortgage banker, and he's going to tell you how your mom and dad buy a house. This is Ash Paulson's dad. He's Raphael! <laughs> and I felt, the kids were like, ah! And the parents looked at me like, you dirty son. <laughs> and it really was a big, then the parents, I mean, the teachers would say, would you come in and like, there's a kind of a Ninja Turtle 4th of July party before we leave for summer vacation. It, it has become a remarkable thing. And now, with the advent of social media and lovely things like this, we do get recognized a bit more. And the beauty of it is that all it does is make everybody happy on either side of the coin. If people find out who we are, it just makes them happy. And they often get tearful, like today, because they will tell you the most profoundly personal stories about Ninja Turtles and my parents had a very acrimonious divorce and it was really difficult with my brother and I. Or, yeah, powerful stuff. And on behalf of all of us, truly, truly, we have nothing without you. Nothing. It's absolutely true. And speaking of school, when he was talking about going to uh, parent, uh, bring your dad to school thing. Yeah. <laughs> my, my cousin was a substitute teacher uh, for like uh, seventh grade or some, some hateful thing like that. Right? <laughs> and y'all remember how you behaved with substitutes, right? It was just like, you know, all rules are off and it's just chaos. So she would have me at the beginning of each uh, school year record as Leonardo telling them to listen and behave around Mrs. Albright and do whatever she, do you kids do whatever Mrs. Albright tells you to do, okay? And all of a sudden it's, <laughs> <laughs> that's the power of the turtles. Yeah. My uh, uh, realization that, that this thing was really taken off is kind of like Barry's, I would go to Toys R Us, but this was for myself because I thought, you know, I've never had an action figure. And this is kind of cool, so I decided, you know what, I, I think that th this thing might have some legs. I'm going to buy one of every toy that comes out. So, <laughs> so I started going to Toys R Us, and I started getting one of each thing, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to put these in a trunk, and I'm just not going to open them, and I'm just going to save them. Well, I, I, after maybe six or eight months of this, I'm going to Toys R Us every week, I was like, God, I can't keep up with this. This is crazy. <laughs> and then I would show up at Toys R Us and the shelves would be half empty. Yeah. Yeah. And I realized, oh my goodness, this thing looks like it's got some legs yeah. for sure. Yeah. And we also used to get, all of us would get, once it really took off, we'd all get phone calls at Christmas time going, Barry, Barry, hi, this is Bob. Can you give me a turtle blimp? Right. And as though, we are literally the turtles, and we know who makes all the blimps. It's no, dude. I've been to 17 Toys R Us between Mexico and San Francisco, and I can't find a goddamn turtle van. And if I don't, my kid's gonna explode. We didn't know how to. Like, 
No, I don't have a van. <laughs> and when, it, when we first got famous, I think this is for all of us, friends would go, hey, you know, come, come over here, little Johnny's here. Guess who this guy is? And they force <laughs> oh, you to, you know, do a little Leonardo. Yeah. Well, they're little kids, and when you go, turtles fight with honor. <laughs> I mean, really, so I go, when they go, oh, come on in, because, you know, yeah. Sally's here, and she, before she goes to bed, I went, put me on the extension phone, because <laughs> she's going to have nightmares. Yeah. I'll call her, because the kids couldn't connect the humanoid right. with the turtleoid, uh, so over the phone, it had a much better outcome. Yeah. Lots safer. Well, lot safer. Harrison Ford had an experience like that. Yeah, some kid, somebody came up to him, hey, my kid's a big Indiana Jones fan, can you go up to it? And he was like, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, how you doing? The kid, the kid was like, no, you're not Indiana Jones. Yeah. It's like, yeah, because he didn't have the hat. Where's the hat? Yeah, the exactly. Yeah. Harrison were right in front of him. The kid was like, no. Yeah. I, I get that now. Sure. <laughs> that you're not Harrison Ford? No. <laughs> he doesn't look that good these days. Oh. <laughs> no, I can say, do the voice. So I'll do April, they go, Yes, <laughs> really? I am April. Yeah. It's pretty great. Oh, by the way, it also works going through customs. Um, uh, either with your turn, or Maurice and I sometimes will do pinky in the brain when we're going through customs. There's all, you know, it's a tough job, and so what are you here for? We're here for, we're here for um, Saskatchewan comic thing and moose jump, whatever. And, oh, really? Now what do you guys do? Cartoon people? Well, you draw them. Now we're going to try, we uh, do the voice. So, yeah, anything I know? Brain. Maurice will say, Well, my friend, I'm the brain, and I'm here, and the world, down, whatever. And he goes, No kidding, that, that's pretty good. He goes, oh, I really am. Oh my God, no kidding. And then Mo says, And this is speaking. Hello! <laughs> and Ben is like, Dude, I don't care what you got hashish or guns or come on. <laughs> Let me get a picture with you. It's the coolest thing. So I walked, I, I accidentally put my wallet oh. on the flight into my oh. luggage, which was going under, under the plane. And I get up to the ticket, th uh, to the oh, yeah. desk. Fortunately, it, it was a smaller than, it wasn't LAX or, you know, whatever, but I get up to the thing. I go, can we see your ID? And I, I, it's in my luggage and it's already in the plane. And they're like, sorry, sir. And I'm like, I... I will have no ID to even get another flight. Google me. Yes, no, so what I did is, it was when I had my banner in a oh, yeah. tube, and I'm like, well, what the, <laughs> oh, this is what the fudge, I'll just try this. So, ah! I, get, I get the thing out of the, out of the tube, and if any of you have been to my table, you see it's got me in the middle with all the characters or something. So I unfurl this. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, ha cha cha. I go, ah. And the guy goes, hang on a sec. <laughs> Talks to the other guy. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, great. It's like, I'm not sure if you don't have an ID, but it works. I thought you were going to say the guy. Hey, I'm Donatello. Yeah, and I'm Leonardo. Yeah. <laughs> I've been on the freaking plane and shut up. Yeah. I was shocked that I they let me on the plane because of my poster. Isn't that cool? <laughs> yeah, it absolutely works. So was, I'm gonna jump on in, take some audience questions. Before I do that, as always, I on behalf of myself and the audience, as always, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for the all for the time. Thank you. Thank you all so much. For these great portrayals of these roles that you've done in this series and all the other you've done. Thank you, Pat. You guys have created such good. wonderful memories for the, our audience and so many others. And like you said before, you've all created such great smiles for thank generations. You. And I thank you for still supporting that amazing Bad haircut. Badass haircut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's my Jack Lord comb over. It's <laughs> Jack Lord! How's that for a cool reference? Well, I was like a cross between a Chia Pet and a Q-tip. So I'll <laughs> take that. So folks, uh, this rule line, like I said, uh, just uh, one question at a time. The questions have to be toward everybody in our, on our panel, and no requests and things like that. Why don't you come over, sir? Yeah, why don't you come over? I'll start you off. All right. Hi, what's your name? James. James, what do you want to know? 
first of all, I want to say, uh, great to see you again. This time I got you incorrect. It's up there this time, Barry Gordon. Yeah, I got yeah. it wrong last time. I'm sorry about that. Okay, I, w I grew up watching the original Turtles, and then also watched the 90s version of the Turtles. And did, did you ever see that version of the Turtles there? That, that version? Yeah. Did you like it, or did you think it was Were we in it? I liked the animation a lot. I, I wasn't... I wasn't knocked out by the voices, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> but I, non union. But I did like the animation. I thought the animation was hot, yeah. I thought it had a really good look, and I thought the storyline was good, yeah. Well, thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. I, mean, I, I think all of the versions have had something to offer. Well, that's the thing that's so remarkable, and that's what's really cool. The yeah. number of artists, the number of artists who have been inspired to do that gig. I mean, that you see them today. I don't know how many unique turtle pieces I've signed that I've yeah. never seen before. Right. Yeah, yeah. And you just know that that young man or young woman in second grade, mom and dad got a phone call saying, hey, you know, Mary Ann is drawing the Ninja Turtles, but she's not tracing them. She's like everything that the, the perspective, all of the appropriate, you know, the mouth is the right size, keep it up, and now she's making a living. I, I love that about turtles, it's great. Hey, what's your name? Michael, hi Mike. I, I, I remember me? Yeah, yeah. hi Michael. Uh, yeah, um, um, my question is this, um, the crossover <coughs> special for the 987 turtles teamed up with the two, 2003 and the 2012 turtles, well, their more silly aspects seem to be a little exaggerated, which make them seem less confident than they were turtles. Can you explain why? Uh, I have, uh, well, I'm not really Donatella, so I'm as dumb as a box of rocks. <laughs> but um, I think your question is, uh, essentially, can you explain why we all were surprised at each other talking to the turtles and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, it was a remarkable thing to be in a studio with them all together as the old turtles talking to the new turtles. And I fortunately got to um, talk to myself. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but I'll tell you what, Mike, it was a remarkable thing. Uh, when that episode, it was called Transdimensional Turtles. And that episode was aired at, uh, it was premiered at New York Comic Con, which is huge, 200,000 people. And the audience was probably about 3,000. And the thing that was most astonishing, which started to tell me the extent to which this franchise connects with people on a deeper level than I ever knew was when the lights came up, there were a whole bunch of guys about your age going like this. It just killed them. Because in that couple of seconds, you got to see 1987 to 2012 that fast. And, but the power of the original show really sticks with people. It's amazing. But thank you for your question, pal. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Hey, what's your name? Hi, I'm Dave. Hi, Dave. Uh, hey, Dave. Thank you guys again for being here. Uh, I want to just ask, Beyond Turtles, if you could have a moment to talk to anybody, you don't have to tell us who, and you could tell that person in your life the proudest moment of your life and the proudest moment of your career, if you feel comfortable sharing that with us, something that you're really proud of in your life or your career, what would that be? If you feel comfortable sharing that, start with sure. Uh, meeting my fourth wife. <laughs> that sounds like a joke, except, and she was my fourth wife. And now being able to celebrate, uh, let's see, our 31st anniversary together. Because, because until then, I was not proud of my marital record. And I began to think that there was something severely wrong with me. And then I met Gail, and I realized that maybe that wasn't the issue, and that I was meant to meet this lady, and it just took a whole long time to find her. But that's probably the proudest moment in my life. And now Barry is taking the Mickey Rooney story on the road. He was married seven times, so he's, he's a, Barry's a lightweight. <laughs> it's a great story. I, I think my proudest moment to date, there are, uh, well, anytime you have children, right? Yeah. But I think the thing that really made me very proud, in addition to the fact that my son is my son, uh, was the first time somebody said, wait, you're Ash Paulson's dad? 
That was the coolest thing. Yeah. I loved it because he, you know, he's doing his own thing. He's really good at it. And it was cool to have them make a fuss over me because they knew of my kid. Well, that was pretty great. So I'm also very lucky to be married to an amazing man, almost um, 39 years. And I've got two amazing kids. Badass prosecutor who put Danny Masters in the way. Yes. Oh. And a phenomenal son who is in New York in finance. But with regard to career, um, Barbara Streisand was always one of my idols. And I um, have been very involved in raising money for scholarships for students at a major university in Israel and was awarded an honorary fellowship, which made me, it was, it was quite amazing. And on the same stage in Israel, on the same day, Barbara Streisand got an honorary PhD. Whoa. But I sang, and she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> My heart was beating so, I, I swear everybody would have, heard, and there were a thousand people in the audience because they thought Barbara was gonna sing. So when, at the end, when they introduced me to sing, they said, and now to sing the Israeli national anthem, Renee Jacobs. And the other people on the stage went, why isn't Barbara singing? So we asked her. She said no. So I got up and, and did that. So that was quite, a, quite an amazing thing. Yeah. So for, for me, yeah. aside from my four kids and my seven grandkids, uh, which makes me pretty darn proud, um, Probably the proudest, well, one of the proudest moments for me, just career-wise, was, uh, so, so my parents uh, met in 1951, uh, while they were both, uh, so I was born in Manhattan, they were both working for NBC uh, at the time, and my dad, his job was, he was the, uh, uh, the, the head of um, the tour division at NBC, so he was the boss of all the pages, and would who would lead the tours and stuff like that. But what my dad really wanted to do was he wanted to be an announcer for the network and audition for it, didn't get it, and they wouldn't take him. And out of frustration, he moved us out of New York to Denver in 1955. Cut to many years later when I'm in LA and I get this fluky audition to go down and read for a promo for NBC and they ended up liking what I did it was for a new campaign they were developing called Must See TV. And they put it on the air that night and then ended up calling me back multiple times over the next couple of weeks. Well, that gig turned into a 16-year gig for me as the comedy voice of NBC, which is what my dad had originally wanted to do. And I'll never forget the first time my dad came out to visit me and actually went down to NBC with me. And I took him to The Tonight Show, and he came into the studio and watched me voice some of my promos and stuff. And just seeing the look on my dad's face as he was watching me do what he had originally wanted to do was an amazing sort of full circle moment for me that I'll just never forget. So, yeah, that was a pretty good one. No kids, no spouse. Next question, please. <laughs> Great question, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dave. Hi, what's your name? Turtle Power, Cynthia here. Turtle Power. And my question is, what is your favorite break the fourth wall moment? Wow. Ooh. Because every episode has yeah. a, a fourth, yeah. fourth wall breaking moment. <laughs> you somehow managed to get them all to be quiet. That's pretty really? important. Yeah, you get, you get extra candy for that. Okay. Well, I, this is kind of a sideways way. Let me ask you this, and it's only because when, when you're younger than springtime, we're collectively Methuselah on steroids. <laughs> um, what is your favorite fourth wall breaking episode? When they first did the uh, 2000s Turtles and the 80s Turtles movie, and they, uh, it was Donnie and Raph with Mikey and Leo, 80s. And Leo turned and said, and that's why we leave the garbage cans on the garbage cans. Oh. Well, and, and, and the other two were like, who 
are you talking to? Uh, well, thank you. That's a good, that's mine too. <laughs> I was singing exactly the same thing as mine, mine, mine. Kind of spooky because that's mine. Too. <laughs> you know, I have to tell you that in the recording sessions, um, each season we would get back into the studio and these guys would do their amazing ad libs and we'd have so much fun and then they'd yell at us and say, stop it, stop it, this year you're gonna be darker, you're gonna, so those, those break the fourth wall moments, a lot of them were ad libs by these guys, and, also, they, and we got curved, you know. They, yeah, they our friend Pat it. Fraley, who played Krang, was a smart, smart, talented guy, and utterly fearless, so he would give us all, like, little things, say this! <laughs> but David, David did like to script that. He did, yeah. David, David Weiss yes. definitely put in Break the Fourth Wall moments, he did. which I was always shocked pleasantly to see, because you don't see that. You, you saw that on a few cartoons, you know, Rocky and Bullwick yeah. sometimes did that. But usually cartoons shied away from that, and the, the fact that he did that, I thought, actually made the show very, very interesting yeah. and very special. Thank you. Great one. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Thank you. Right. Thank you. We have time for one more. So, hey, what's your name? Jacob. Uh, Jake. I've met quite a few guys before. Hi. Hi. So, what I want to know is, uh, you guys were all invited in one way or another to be a part of the 2012 Turtles. Uh, Rob, you were. Donnie, and you all sort of prized Raph. Uh, you guys all returned as your turtles, and Renee, you played uh, Mrs. Daniel Mom thing. So, what was it like to be asked to return to be a part of a show for a new generation? And basically, like, what was it like to come back? I was well, I just retired. Yeah, yeah. I, I had I had retired, and then I got the call to do it, and, and I was stunned. And I said, I can do Donatello. Yeah. <laughs> Parents retired. Yeah. Actually, they all said they could do Donatello. Right. <laughs> there was a whole contest about it. <laughs> I decided to come out of retirement and, you know, ease their pain. Thank you. <laughs> no. but, um, but it was, oh my God, was that fun. Yep. And, and I mean, Rob knows more of the backstory of how that all happened. But uh, when we got that call, and, and then they said, I mean, that was as crazy as anything when they said, well, the 80s turtles are going to be the 2012 yeah. turtle. Right? What? Yeah. You know, how is that going to happen? I would so, say the best coming back together, though, was a series of Christmas commercials we did for Oh, that, yes. Oh, yes. That. yes. And we all got together, and here are these people who are probably your age and were with their Cheerios and their turtle PJs watching us. Fantastic. Just talking about it, and as yeah. Rob comments, uh, you look over at the what we call the suits, who are big kids on yeah. their own, and they're like yeah. wiping away the tears, and we are back together again and experiencing. Seriously, we're the campaign to get that Christmas feeling. Again. That's what a compliment was like. I don't know what to do with that. That's so. It's, it really, truly is, you guys. It is utterly impossible for us to quantify what your kindness and your love and your and your turtleness means to us. We, we truly, I think it's turtleosity. Turtleosity. <laughs> um, it, all of us have been, by any measure, more fortunate than we could have ever imagined in a very difficult business. And the fact that we're still here, not only breathing, but relevant to an enormous part of the population as a result of something we did that made us laugh which we were well paid. This has nothing to do for us with money, ratings, uh, merchandise. That's all great. And it's a big part of the equation, obviously. But the, the, the individual stories and meeting you guys and often through tears hearing, nobody gets to do this. And, and it is, it is, so we have, we just thank you so much. I mean, I think you, you asked before, you, you asked before, when did we know that Turtles was going to be what it is? Oh, yeah. We knew it was going to be a commercial success because we kept getting renewed. We had no idea, at least I didn't, of the societal impact, of the impact on people 
until we started to do these cons and started to meet all of you. And now we are still in a state of shock <laughs> as to the, the kind of impact we had just doing our thing. Yeah. Uh, it's really, really amazing. And it's well, all due to you because you cared. And yeah, I your stories you. are what make all of this worthwhile for us, certainly for me, and uh, that's what I appreciate. Uh, because without you guys, we wouldn't even be, be together. You know? so, yeah, and, and, and we, we all uh, go home exhausted from these wonderful weekends from saying thank you. I say Leonardo, I say go tell Cam, because he's got an inferiority complex. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. But I think we all have our favorite April. Yes! <laughs> Renee has put up with a lot. It's like having four brothers who really should all be in rehab. <laughs> she treats us like gold, and we love her so much. She does. Thank you all for bringing us together after 20 years of not being together, and uh, we all of a sudden have become a, a family again, and I've got three brothers and a sister that I never had before, um, and uh, you should see our texts. Uh, they maybe go on for days. Well, maybe they shouldn't. <laughs> uh, friends, they'll be back at the tables in a little bit. Uh, please stop on by. Lots of neat stuff. And don't forget that smiles are always free. Gentlemen and ladies, this has been an absolute pleasure. Uh, we're going to do this again next week in Raleigh. If you want to come on out to Galaxy Town Raleigh, and we uh, got to do on three. Yeah, we're going to do it. Yeah, we're going to do it. Turn on three. Ready? One, All right, everybody. Two, three. Turn!